He Even Has Your Eyes is a movie directed by Jean-Baptiste in 2016 and taking place in the modern day France. The plot revolves around an interracial adoption and how it is received by the different characters which leads to many personal and societal revelations for the viewer, many comedic situations, and leaves us wondering about ourselves. It is a very current and forward-thinking storyline that challenges some recognizable stereotypes, specifically how we are comfortable with white couples adopting a child from a different race. But things change dramatically when a black couple adopts a white baby, as portrayed in the movie. Racial stereotypes, discrimination, and adversive racism is a form of racism that is not as direct, but more subtle, and not consciously acted upon, are all masterfully enacted throughout the movie in a very relatable and realistic situations. We see early on the discomfort and careful wording of the social workers as they introduce Benjamin while avoiding descriptions such as white, and acknowledging that this is the first adoption of its kind for them. Then we see the new grandparents, whose fear appears that the baby might be from Congo, and their shock when seeing Benjamin is white for the first time. Most noticeable example of adversive racism is the behavior of the social worker charged with supervising the adoption. She rationalizes her discriminatory behavior, believing it is in the child's best interest, and she's fighting against any change in the status quo. The most dramatic moment in the movie comes when Benjamin is taken away from the grandmother's friend while she is looking after him and authorities single her out to ask her for her papers. Discriminatory behaviors is portrayed in the evolution of oppression step tool adapted by Anne Curry Stevens escalate when they become institutional and systemic, such as in this case in the family mistreatment by authorities, police, hospital and social workers. Another powerful moment in the movie is how the happy ending feels unrealistic and almost fairy tale like when the black family is suddenly understood and the adoption accepted as being in the best interest of the baby, even though parents kidnapped him from the hospital and barricaded themselves in one of the hospital rooms in order to feed him as he would not accept food from anybody else. Witnessing Benjamin finally taking the bottle when given by his adoptive mother was the turning point for the antagonist in the movie, The Social Worker, which gives viewers a glimpse in what is possible or what should be, but also because such ending is so unrealistic, it leaves us with the powerful recognition of a current social discrimination issue and of interracial acceptance and inequality. The movie He Even Has Your Eyes is a beautifully executed artistic attempt in not only portraying controversial and current racial stereotypes and embedded into our social and administrative system discriminatory behaviors towards minorities and black people in particular. It explores the effects of race and ethnicity on the modern day families and takes us on a journey of experiencing how one family's love for their new baby regardless of culture, race, and ethnicity, is stronger than the accepted societal norms. The movie is available on Netflix in Canada, but has very minimal internet exposure, no social media presence, and provides no opportunities to follow up with movie creators on any issues raised by the movie. To create discussion and also enhance learning and awareness for the audience, we will invite the audience to participate in conversation using an online chat forum web address and social media hashtags posted directly onto specific sensitive issues throughout the movie. This strategy can allow potential parents to learn more about their baby's heritage and give the couple an opportunity to connect relate, and learn with other adoptive parents, creating an online community. 
This type of collaboration of structured asynchronous online forums enable reflective and substantial postings and create a supportive and constructive learning environment, leading to an affirmation of their identities and enhanced critical cultural awareness. Online forums and modules also allow for more flexibility to construct understanding, evaluate the relevance and significance of their responses, and allow more time to formulate their contributions to discussions of sensitive issues. Through learner-to-learner -learner discussion, online forums engage students in active learning and promote growth of collaborative learning communities. The interactions that take place in these communities would build knowledge of aversive racism and help people to understand their own internal biases and take steps to prevent their expression and, hopefully, to remove them altogether. While the movie is currently only available on Netflix, our solution would require a new method of distribution, one that would disseminate the film across as wide an audience as possible, with the intention of encouraging the public to actively engage in the discussions taking place in the forums and other online communities. The National Film Board of Canada could be used as an example of an open model where all members of society are encouraged to view and interact with the available content. A website that is already dedicated to the cause of stopping racism and hate is Stop Racism and Hate Canada. In Canada, racism is an issue that almost everybody faces in their life, and this site is just one of many to help prevent it. The site features a tab to report crimes of racism and hate to the police, as well as a plethora of links to other sites that provide the same themes that this one does. You can also view campaigns combating different kinds of hate, as well as a strategic guide against it. The website also features a large amount of links to various other kinds of stories pertaining to hate in general. Here, users can view other people's situations and find solitude on the fact that they are not alone. The detail here is extensive, and this group is definitely using its influence for the greater good. Moving towards the film side of the equation, the NFB, or National Film Board, is a significant part of the Canadian film scene, often known for their documentaries, often pertaining to real-life issues in the world and bringing them to more attention. Such films can contain historical ventures, current news stories, or hot topics from around the world. It is also here where you can find a vast amount of anti-racial films that look at instances of racism in Canada and support dialogue on equality and diversity. We can see here that Canada has taken a proactive role in the fight against racism and hate by bringing awareness to their wide platform. A more specific example to this issue would be from the film The Blind Side. The film details the story of Michael Orr, a black teen who is struggling after the loss of his father. Michael is given the chance to live with Leanne and her family. Throughout the story, we see Michael become more as a part of the family rather than the stranger sleeping on their couch. This film shows a striking resemblance to He Even Has Your Eyes, most notably towards the detail of interracial adoption. Both films are a great insight to the struggles of people unlike ourselves, and how we can all make a difference in our own way. As we saw in the film, an interracial adoption can be stressful for both the parents and their close support group. Let's take a look at some tools that could help prospective parents to understand the challenges that may lay ahead and give them assistance or support both before and during the process. A helpful tool for couples looking to adopt could be video interviews with couples who have gone through adoption. These videos will allow couples and current parents to hear the experiences of parents that have gone through the adoption process and the obstacles that they had to go through. These videos could provide a sort of comfort for future and current parents in, these, in the sense that they would see that others have had similar experiences and they truly are not alone. As we saw in the movie, He Even Has Your Eyes, oftentimes the mother, Salamata, felt alone in her experiences as Benjamin's mother, but was comforted when she spoke to the white couple that had an adopted black son. Informative videos on interracial adoption could also be beneficial to these parents. These videos could inform the couple about the various elements that go into the raising of a child of a different race, how to implement the child's culture into their lives, and also how to introduce the child to their family. As we saw in the movie, Salamata did not know how to tell her family 
the news of her son and opted to keep it a secret until she figured a way to tell them. However, this did not last long as a social worker went to go see Salamata's mother and asked her about the child of which she had no knowledge of. This whole ordeal caused great stress for the couple and introduction of the child really could have been handled better if more information was given to the couple on how to help adapt their family to this change and how to deal with biases that may be present within their families and within themselves. So why don't we take a look at some more informal methods of being able to look into these kind of topics. We've been looking at very formal websites and documentation, um, but like a problem that happened during the movie, the mother character in the movie did not want to go to a formal meeting to discuss with other people her experiences or a formal website. And quite frankly, I've had an experience with this in my family where they didn't want to go to a focus group or go somewhere else. They just wanted to be in the comfort of the home recovering and getting through the process. Well, again, the wonders of modern technology can let us you know, go through that and make that change. For example, there are people that are living this life and are comfortable with documenting it. So I found some three quick little YouTube channels of people in a similar situation as to what we discovered. Um, while interracial in these cases were not as dramatic as in He Has Your Eyes, these are people that are going through the adoption process. They have kids that were adopted that, you know, for whatever reason, they couldn't have kids of their own or they just didn't want to, so they adopted instead. Um, this is a way to provide some, you know, insight on how it's like. But we can also look at some other aspects, uh, other ways of communication, because sometimes you just can't beat a human. So I found um, using a communication chat a channel I use called Discord can have multiple servers, so you can go through looking at different, multiple, multiple places um, for different places across the world. Uh, there's different servers, different channels and said servers, and ways to talk vocally or just by typing. Similarly, we even have Skype where you can make groups and just will have one-on-one -on -one talks just on your spare time. And due to the fact that both of these can be put on your phone these days, you're not limited to being just, you know, just talking to them. When you're at home, you can talk to them on the go because you're unclear or you're not sure. So something else that could have been done was, could have done more with the end credits at the end of the movie itself. Um, most movies based off true stories do have some form of, if you want to support this cause that we are talking about, you can find relevant places here, here, and here. Um, there was no direction for social media in the end credits, which can be another form of informal meeting for people that can be more comfortable. Another thing that could have been done was just testimonies, person's testimonies that have gone through this process already. They've been there, they've done that, they understand what it's like, they understand that it's a struggle, and that no one is forcing them to continue through all this. All in all, there are still options out there for people that are not comfortable going to big groups. Um, if people do not like being in focus groups, or just big groups of people all together in one space, you can go out and still watch videos about it, um, ask questions anonymously through voice chats, and even through the YouTube videos, and leaving comments anonymously and just asking some certain questions when you're not sure of things or you just want some clarification.